I think Don Pika. I now wish to invite the Honourable Manamela. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, Honourable President, Deputy President, Honourable Members. I just want to, before I get into the death of my speech, indicate that millions of South Africans who have been watching almost every state of the nation address, almost every presidential budget votes, ask themselves the question, where is the respect that in particular the Honorable Lindiwe Mazibuko should be given to our president? Yes, yes, let us differ with the president. Yes, let us be critical, but there must be sub substance in, the, in that difference and in that criticism. But to treat our president in a condescending and disrespectful way, that has to be dealt with. But I think that it... What we've also seen, Honorable Speaker and Honorable President, is that the voice of both the DA and that of the Congress of the People have become so indistinguishable. When one listened to both of them, you would be forgiven to think that they are just one political party. It is a shame that, on, it is, it is a shame that not only is Honorable Mazibuko receives, is receiving a speech from the Western Cape Provincial Legislature, but it is also unfortunate that the ones has been a revolutionary Honorable Chara Lekota is sharing notes with the Honorable Mazibuko. It is also a shame that you, Honorable uh, uh, Lekota, who has left the house, uh, reads from the same script and the same verbiage word by word and effectively become an extension and mouthpiece of the Democratic Alliance. You collectively, you collectively say that the president has failed and should, and should not be re-elected. It is your democratic right. But it is a shame that you cannot afford your own people in the Congress of the People the same opportunity we have in the ANC of electing our leaders every five years. If you clean your house, wherever he is listening, if he's not, unfortunately, but wherever he is, Honorable Lekota, and I know the message will go through, clean your house, and then the people of South Africa will begin to listen to you. But it is also unfortunate that both the DA and COPE have read the same script authored by Goebbels uh, of Hitler's Germany, that the bigger the lie, the bigger the lie, and the more it is repeated, the bigger the chances of that lie being believed. Let us look, for instance, at the statistics that relates to unemployment. In 2004 to 2009, when the ANC was leading in the Western Cape, the Western Cape gained more than 138,000 jobs. That's under ANC government. But under the DA, from 2009 to date, and maybe including the ID, the Western Cape lost 70,000 jobs and narrow employment have increased, I mean has decreased to more than 133,000 jobs. But wait for it, in the last 12 months, while the country as a whole created 200,000 jobs, the DA lost 37,000 jobs. And using the logic of Honorable Mazibuko, Using her logic, which she had extended to the president, the DA must not only accept responsibility and blame, but the honorable member and her leader, Premier Ellen Zilla, must do the honorable thing for the Western Cape people. Please resign. Please go, go quietly, and we will not even mention this in the future. This lies also include what you consistently repeat. We knew that you were going to speak about Marikana. You were going to speak about the illegal lending of the Guptas in Waterkloof. We knew that you were going to speak about Nkandla. We knew that you were going to try and create divisions within the ruling party on, and its alliance partners on the question of the national development plan. But you dismally failed. You came here and you said everything that you have been saying in the past, and there's nothing new that has been coming from the opposition parties. The first inclination of the opposition to any tragedy of us, which is in sync with what is daily repeated in the media, is that the president is responsible for everything bad that happens, and all the good that is done by government just happens by chance. Flights get delayed, blame Zuma. The weather is bad, blame Zuma. There's a range is too weak, blame Zuma. There's a cloud on Table Mountain, blame Zuma. 
The Honorable Lindy Wamasibuko has bad fashion taste and has been arrest arrested by the police, by the fashion police, blame Zuma. So everything must be blamed on Zuma. Previous ANC speakers order, underlined order, order, order. many of the highlights of what this fourth ANC-led democratic administration has achieved under your leadership, Comrade President. Building on earlier advances by previous ANC-led administration, the fourth administration has, has driven major improvements in life expect ex expectancy and a major reduction in mother-to-child HIV transmission. It has also introduced for the first time a 20-year approach to planning and tabled a national development plan, a vision which we are all proud of. NUMSA, COSATU, SACP, everybody is proud about this vision that has been presented. Driven the massification of our public employment scheme through the EPWP and the Community Works Program. There are many other important qualitative shifts driven by the post-2009 administration. And I want to dwell on one very important one, uh, uh, Honorable President. The the Infrastructure Coordinating Commission, which uh, underlying statistics actually speak for themselves. It was the third administration that really kick-started massive government-led infrastructure program, which led to a successful FIFA World Cup, and this is a, a, a administration intends doubling government expenditure on infrastructure. And no wonder even the Financial Mail, although it does not uh, acknowledge that it is government's uh, intervention, acknowledge that construction is the runaway leader in terms of the relative development of GDP growth by sector. The labor market statistics for the new growth path period of the third quarter in 2010 also presents a similar story. Success, success, and success. And that, and that if you come to this podium an election year, you will not see that success. If you come to this podium after re having read the garbage that is being spread in the media and everywhere else, you will not see that success which this fourth administration has actually come up with. The PICC's impact is not just directed at unlocking untapped mineral resources through the coordinated development of rail lines, water pipelines, energy, provision and human settlement. But it is also beginning to unlock plans which uh, have long been sitting uh, even under the apartheid administration, such as the, the, the Mzimbuvu uh, Dam, which as a result of the intervention of this presidency, progress is being made. Residents of Kosovo informal settlement in Philippi have been told by Mayor Hel uh, 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 Dilin that she has now suspended sending the council sanitation staff to empty toilets. The resident says the toilets, which are supposed to be emptied twice a week, haven't been emptied in three months. It is important to remember that the sanitation in crisis in Cape Town is not new. First there was the open toilet saga, now uh, uh, they, they, uh, well, there was also the disastrous city-led maintenance of communal toilets by using a completely bossed up EPWP project. And let's be fair, it is not only in Cape Town that there's a problem of sanitation, but it is the problem of the response of the DA to this crisis in relation to the Western Cape. And what does the DA say? The DA says, that communities suffering this, this uh, 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 terrible indignities should, according to the DA's policy, which is on their website, uh, under our policies and under housing, it says, and I quote, providing adequate shelter is first and foremost, foremost an individual responsibility. It's a principle that they repeat three times on that website. And, that in, and essentially what they're saying is, black men, you are on your own. Impoverished black women, the homeless, those who crowded into unhygienic informal settlements, you are basically on your own. The DA is without you. The DA assures you that most people are quite able and willing to play their role, particularly if bureaucratic obstacles are removed. So for them, it's a problem of bureaucracy. And that's why they can't uh, empty uh, toilets in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in those uh, informal settlements. And, and I think that that, that, of course, we're very clear that we do not condone what happened over the last few weeks where people were throwing feces. But if you label people as aliens, they will be alienated. Order, order, no matter, if, order. If you label people as aliens, as refugees, they will be aliens. They will behave in the same way. And, and since uh, we, were, we have been saying a lot of amens and talking about the Bible, it is the same Bible which says, whoever sows injustice 
will reap calamity. And, and that for whatever one sows, that will ye reap. And we've seen what uh, the Premier and the Mayor have been reaping over the last few weeks. And that in Philippi and in Danone, in Kailicha, the whole communities are coming to their own conclusion about your attitudes and your policies, and that those stinks, and they don't want them. The same, the same leave it to the market approach is to be found in the DS perspective on the reindustrialization of our economy. The DA has rejected our government's led industri industrial uh, uh, policy action plan, arguing in state for a light touch from the state. And they tell us that government's role is to pick winners and leave the rest to the market. But unfortunately, when last week the, the, the uh, Hisense, which was launching a television and refri refrigerator plant in, Atlantics, in Atlantis, they, uh, and which they were encouraged to do so through a 28.6 million investment by the Department of Trade and Industry as a result of this IPAP. What did Helen Ziller do? She ran for a photo opportunity. She forgot of a criticism of IPAP. She forgot of a criticism of the new growth plan. She forgot that she's advocating for divisions on the new development plan. She was pushing everybody trying to be the main frame on the picture on that particular day. She didn't say to the Chinese and the vice president of China who was there that your state-led industrialization is a threat to our democracy. She didn't say to them that we don't want your investment because it is as a result of state intervention. She didn't lecture them about their liberal ideology, that of uh, 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 you know, leaving everything to the market. But instead, all she was interested in, will the uh, voters in Atlantis see me in that picture? And that's what the DA is all about. The opportunism when it comes to policy articulation vis-a-vis -vis their opportunism when it comes to getting rank and file votes from our people. Now, now, there's one other opportunism, uh, Honorable President, that I think we really need to expose. That the DA and their friends have a great deal to say about corruption in government, and we must deal with corruption in government. And that it is our collective responsibility to do that. But what are we to make of the visual total silence of the DA in relation to the multi-billion rent fr uh, fraudulent collusion on the part of at least 18 uh, construction companies, including six major com South African companies, as exposed by the Competitions Commission? Peter Bruce even encourages them uh, to, to continue doing that. And he says, and I quote, surely the idea in some industries and in some circumstances will be to see the value in price collusion. The only way to get things done uh, and, and, and done ship shape was to allow the big firms basically to divide up the work amongst themselves. Now, Minister Patel complains about, uh, uh, wants to police collusion in the state's big infrastructure program, close quote. Now, essentially, Peter Bruce is brazenly in a business uh, uh, newspaper advocating criminal be uh, behavior. And this is not just petty theft. This is not 100 rand. We're talking about 300 projects which involves more than 47 billion rands. Let's leave it to the market. And yet, our friends here who shout the loudest when there's a publication about allegations about corruption in the newspapers were quiet when it comes to this. And we thought, because they support competition, which is liberal ideology, support competition, the market, and all. We thought that they will be the first ones to, to, to make a statement. But yet, they sat back and relaxed. And maybe they said, no, these companies are too big to fail. Or maybe they're even too big to jail. We must focus on the minos, on the small ones, on the government bureaucrats, and so forth. Those are the ones who must be jailed. And it is wrong for the DA to keep quiet about this. There's been creeping, there's been creeping and personalized attack, uh, President, from the opposition, not on the presidency, but on your individual, on your person. And, and obviously because we're going to elections, this excitement, this adrenaline is obviously going to be coming up. But it is not new. In fact, in 2009, a 
British columnist named uh, Peter Hitchens writes in the mail uh, on Sunday, that, and he told his readers that, uh, and I quote, a hopelessly one-sided and rather crooked election will be taking place in South Africa and that ours will be a failed state. And on what, what was the basis of this uh, attack on the ANC and also on, on its president? And they said that, and I quote, that the president completely lacks westernized polish and smoothness of Mandela and Becky. South Africa's largest tribe are a proud fighting people, and Zuma will not be a mild leader, a Mandela and Tambo, as Mandela and Tambo were. In Zululand, young men brought up in the warrior spirit wander in angry and resentful groups, strikingly unlike the more peaceful closers to the South close coast. Obviously, no one will, and, and my apologies for quoting this nonsense and bilious, unreconstructed colonial trash, but no one can and will openly say some of these things. I don't imagine that, uh, at least in public. But some in the DA do repeat these things. They do repeat, you know, I've got an article here by, uh, uh, this is the DA. This is what Know Your DA is all about. The DA which is reproducing almost similar garbage as reproduced in Western countries, about how racist some of the individuals in the DA are, and about the anger by some of the black politicians in the DA who cannot take it anymore, who are sick and tired of how racist some of the councillors are, and even some of them go to the extent of confessing to the fact that the DA will be too dangerous to take over the PE Metro, and people internally in the DA are praying that the DA in that area does not take over the Metro. Now, now you don't have to. You don't have to spend millions of rands on Know Your DA, developing propaganda, 12-minute videos. You have to spend millions of rands making sure that some in your bench and some in your councils down there become true South Africans. And forget some of this nonsense that has been repeated in this article and this email, which, and I want to read some of them because uh, you, you may think that uh, you know, I'm, I'm creating this. One of the things which this chap reproduces or repeats is that, is that there's 25% pregnancy rates among school girls because we have out everyone and spread disease. But he goes on to say, he goes on to say that, that refer, the, the, the email refers to blacks or black people as dumb idiots who wait for handouts. The email, Further, refers to the president as having more wives than brain cells. Now, this is a party that looks upon not only the president, but young girls in schools, but also generally black people, even those who are in the DA, as idiots, as uh, uh, these uh, beasts whose main preoccupation is about sex. And yet the DA says, we need to know your DA. And that is not the only evidence. If you look at what is happening in the Western Cape, if you look at the composition of government in the Western Cape, if you look at the bureaucracy in the Western Cape, it is lily white, it is a reflection of what was happening under apartheid, and we don't want to see that being repeated in all the nine other provinces. We now know your DA. We know that it stands for this racism that is being distributed by Mr. Slabet or Councillor Slabet in the Western Cape. And stop saying it, Joppy job, particularly those who are in this side of the bench who knows of these problems. Stop being, uh, you know, the acceptable ducky in the DA. You know where you belong. It is, it, it is, it is not enough to just say, Speaker. boy, choppy job, so, you know, let's, uh, let's go on with it. Um, there's a point of order. Yes, sir, what's is the point of order? parliamentary to use the word ducky in parliament? Order like? on members. Order on members. Order. 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 Uh, uh, continue, sir. Thank you very much. But having no, no. listened... No, no, uh, no, no, no. Hold on. Are you continue with the point? No, I asked the question, Speaker. Is it parliamentary to use the word daki in parliament? Bef well, there's nothing in the rules that says you can't use daki. They ruled but, but again, I'll, I'll, they ruled I'll, again, I'll, I'll, Speaker, I'll, I'll, they ruled order, again, order. Minister Blade. Order, Honourable Member, order, I'm, I'm still, on the, uh, still speaking. 
I'll study their hands out, I'll check, and I'll come back on that one. And Mamela will apologize. I will, yes. Thank, Thank you, Speaker. Speaker. Mm. Uh, uh, proceed. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. What we have listened here today, Honorable President, and going back to what Hitchin said, I suspect that the DA wants you to exhibit westernized and polished, I mean, and, uh, polish and smoothness. I'm sure you've heard how Honorable Lindy Wemazibogo speaks. That's westernized polish and smoothness. When you are dealing with them and their constituency, they want you to be a mild leader. But when it comes to the trade union movement, when it comes to COSATU, they want, and all the homeless, all the marginalized, they want you to do a, a completely different things. You are supposed to tell the unions, the poor, and everybody else that you are the boss. That is when leader, your leadership is being questioned, when you are supposed to, in their own ways, be dealing with COSATU. But when it comes to them, you must be this polished person. You must be nice to the markets. You must be nice to the world and everybody else, and forget about the real people who ensure that the ANC leads and the ANC will continue to lead. In closing, uh, President, we as the ANC support these budget votes because it represents the future. We do not have the responsibility and luxury of sitting in the opposition benches. You have the responsibility to govern. You do not have to please anybody else but the real electorate, the real people who put the ANC into office. And we hope that through this budget, you will be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Order, order, order. Honourable members, that concludes the list of speakers on the debate on this budget vote and the business of the day. The honourable order, honourable members, order. The honourable the president will reply tomorrow. The house is adjourned.